Hi, this is Adam from MakerState, and in this video I'm going to show you the scratch build for the project Scratch Science Food and Energy. In this project, we're going to build food collectible items that your sprites can pick up and that they can gain health or energy from. We're also going to write a script that simulates the growth of some fruit, and we're going to use variables to store the amount of energy that our sprite has and use that to dictate how fast they can move. Okay, so in a video game context, the idea of being able to pick up or eat food is something that we see a lot, whether it's Mario's mushrooms or fruits in Pac-Man and a lot of other video games. So this is a concept that uh, is used a lot. To get started, I'm going to keep using the cat sprite for this game and I'm going to select a backdrop uh, by clicking on backdrops in the bottom left. And I'm gonna choose this beach right here. Great. To start writing my scripts, I'm going to go to my cat's script and start by writing a movement script for this cat, just a basic one using when green flag clicked, forever, if then, if right arrow key pressed, then we're going to move 10 steps and point in direction 90. And then I'm going to duplicate this if then statement with the duplicate tool up here with the stamp tool and change two of these values, the key pressed and the point in direction blocks to uh, left and negative 90. Okay, so this is a basic movement script that I use for a lot of my projects. And if we run this, we see that we have this problem where the cat flips over when I try to make it move to the left. So I can use a set rotation style left right block to fix that. And now if I run this, this cat just moves left and right, just like that. And I can also, for fun, add a next costume block to this because I know that this cat has two costumes and that switching back and forth between them will create a nice little walking animation. Now I'm gonna add a couple more sprites. I'm going to add some bananas. Those are gonna be my, my energy source, my food for this project. I'm going to add a palm tree for the bananas to grow on. And this is just gonna sit here. We're not gonna write any sprites for the tree, but the bananas will sit on top of the tree. And finally, I'm gonna grab a sprite of the sun just to hint at the fact that these bananas are receiving their energy and this tree, I should say, is receiving its energy from the sun and then the energy is gonna go to my sprite right here, okay? So to get started with the other scripts, I already have my movement script done for my cat. For the bananas, I'm gonna write a script that starts them at you know, invisible and then grows them up to their current size. And to do that, I'm going to use this change size block and this set size block. I'm going to start with this block set to zero, set size to zero, and then I'm repeatedly going to use this change size block to grow the bananas up to their current size. And to do that, I'm going to use this repeat block. And then if I set this whole thing to when green flag clicked, then I can click the green flag and we'll see them grow up just like that. And I'm going to add a little bit of wait time in between these growth cycles just to show them happening, show that happening a little bit more slowly. So I'm using half a second here. Great. So now when I click the green flag, my bananas go back to zero and then they grow to their current size. Now what I want to do is change this script such that it waits for my cat to get to the bananas and then does this cycle such that the cat eats the bananas and then the bananas grow back. So I can do this by adding a forever loop and a wait until block. I'm going to put that wait until block up here and say wait until touching the cat or touching sprite one in this case, then do all of that growth. And oh, my cat is missing the bananas. So let's just bring all of these things down a couple pixels. And now my cat can get to the bananas and the bananas grow back. Let's add a little bit of wait time in between the set size block and the other loop, two seconds perhaps. And now the cat will eat the bananas, bananas go away wait for two seconds and then they grow back. Great, and just like that, we have a working simulation where we have these collectible food items that, that my sprite can eat and then the food grows back and I could easily start adding more of these and maybe make a game where I have to collect you know, all the, all the fruits or something like that. Um, and, and this works pretty well. What I'm gonna do now is add a variable to this project that will 
represent an amount of energy that my sprite has and then use that energy to control how fast they move. Okay, so I'm going to stop this project from running for a second and then go to data and make a variable called energy. And I'm going to start by setting energy to five, which is fairly arbitrary, but we're just going to start with energy at five. And then I'm going to bring this energy number variable block into the move blocks that I have in my code already. So now when I start this project, my energy is set to five and my cat moves a little bit slower than it did before moving at, you know, five pixels per, per movement. And that's happening right here in this loop. Okay. So now what I need, what I need to do is add some code that makes my energy go up when the cat eats bananas and make the energy kind of go down in general otherwise. Okay as the cat walks around and expends more energy. So I'm going to start by making a change to this code that adds energy to my cat's energy, or I should say increases my cat's energy when the cat eats the bananas. And to do that, I'm going to use this change energy block and put this right up here in between the weight and the set size block. So when the cat touches the bananas, the bananas will go away and we'll add to my cat's energy. And just so we know that's working now, I can see my cat's moving much faster than it was before. What I want to do now in the cat is add a little bit of code that will decrease my energy over time. Okay. And what I'm going to do for that is start with a new loop. That's going to kind of run alongside this other loop when green flag clicked with a forever block. And I'm just going to say, wait four seconds. And every four seconds, let's change my energy by negative one. So over time, now the cat's energy will fall by one. So if we look at the energy up here in the top left-hand corner, now it's down to four and I'm moving a little bit slower even, and down to three and I'm moving really slowly, down to two, just barely moving. And then if I hit the bananas, then all of a sudden I move a little bit faster, okay? And if I wait over here for the bananas to come back, I can get them quickly and now I'm back up to 10. Okay. So there we have a, a somewhat or a pretty good working um, demonstration of how my sprite can obtain energy from these bananas. Okay. So at this point, I'm just going to add a couple of finishing touches to this project. First, I'm going to add an if then statement over here to make it such that I only lose energy if my energy is above zero. So I'm going to say if. energy is greater than one, or I should say if energy is greater than zero, then we'll subtract one if my energy, and actually let's say if energy is greater than one, because we don't want my energy to reach zero, because then I won't be able to walk at all. So if energy is greater than one, change energy by negative one, which means that my energy can get all the way down to one. We'll see that happen if I just leave this sprite here long enough, um, but then it won't subtract from that anymore. Okay. So here we're at two and there we're at one. And now I'm not going to lose any more energy. Okay. Um, something else I'm going to do just for fun is add another one of these that says if my energy is less than a certain number, maybe I'll add some dialogue that will, you know, instruct the player that we need some food to keep moving. So if energy is less than four, say, I'm hungry. I need some food to keep moving. You can see the rest of that over here. Okay, great. So that, that works. Now that my health has fallen below a certain amount, my cat's starting to say this. I'm hungry. I need some food to keep moving. And then if I get the bananas, my health's back up. Great. One last little thing is I'm going to write a quick little script for this sun here that will make it kind of, uh, you know, pulse, just kind of show some light being emitted from it maybe. So forever. And I'm going to use these set size blocks again. So set size to 
95%, set size to 100%, and let's just add a little bit of a wait time in between those. And just like that, now the sun's kind of pulsing up here. That looks nice. And now I'm going to call this project complete. So I have my health, my energy, I should say, reacting to um, how often I eat food and how often I wait in between eating food. If my energy gets too low, my cat will say, hey, I'm hungry. I need some more food to keep moving. And there are many different ways you can take this project. You could create a game where you have to collect all the food in a certain amount of time or move as far as possible without running out of energy. You can add, you know, these aspects to your other, these qualities to your other projects and games with collectible foods or maybe keep track of how many things you collect. Um, this concept of energy, you know, you can add other, um, have other things that influence your energy in different ways like, uh, you know, or different foods that, you know, give you different amounts of energy. So there's a lot of ways you can go with this game. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope that it was helpful and I hope that, uh, you come back for the next scratch science video. So thanks for watching. Bye.